Guys, guyettes, we are moving on with the zero budget restoration and his Volkswagen Caddy. Today we're gonna to tackle the rusty seal. We have got a massive budget to spend. Nope, we have got zero pounds. What can we do to tidy it up, make it look a lot better for nothing? Let's get into it. And he's still polishing his caddy a week later. Still loving it? Yeah, I love it, mate. Um, it's come up a lot better. We've took all the stickers off the rear door, got all the sticky marks off, and look at those rear doors for an 05 caddy. They are really good. Mine were absolutely punted in. Coming up really nice. Today, we're gonna tackle the seal. The bumper's ugly. We'll see how we get on with that another day. Um, the seal, if we walk round here, you might remember it, but it is not pretty. The rest of the panel's nice. The door's good, apart from one little mark we can touch in. The wing is a little bit ropey. I'm sure we can do something. But today, we're gonna tackle this sill. I've seen a few Volkswagen caddies in a similar condition. Some of them rust, some of them don't. This one has gone a little bit. Well, a bit more than a little bit, a lot of bit. And uh, what we need to do, we need to bare metal it. You can't just, you could just go in with some rust treater now, which would prevent it and hold it back a little while. But to do it nicely, we need to get all the paint off the whole seal. Um, I might not do, I don't know. It'd be nice to get all the paint off, but it's quite involved. And it is all right in the middle, but we don't want fresh paint, old paint, fresh paint. So Andy's gonna lay on his side with a grinder. We're gonna get all that paint off and everywhere there's rust, you need to get the paint all the way around it off and uh, expose all the metal with some rust on. So I'm gonna get a camera set up, I'm gonna get a grinder set up, we're gonna jack it up. Let's, uh, let's dig in to getting some of this paint off, some of this stone chip off and see what's underneath. I do already know there is a hole there. You could tell that by a hole. And there is a hole under there. Let me pan up. There is a hole there, but it's not too bad. The rest of it's all right-ish, but we need to get the paint off and see what's going on. Let's dig in. Quite simply, extension lead, extension lead, extension lead to a grinder on a flap wheel, something nice to lay on. We got a jack, we'll find a, an axle stand for him. And this is what I require from him. You need to expose all the rust when doing something like this rather than just feathering that edge out because the rust comes under and then it will grow back. I need Andy to expose all of it back to bare metal so you can basically see in black and white, black, white, what he needs to do. He needs to grind all that back to bare metal and along this surface we need to grind this up too. It's not just getting the paint off, we need to get as much of the rust off as possible. We're going to hit it with a flap disc on a grinder and then we're going to hit the rusty areas with wire wheel maybe on a grinder or a drill you know the eye cheek pokers and uh and then we're going to anti-rust it we're going to start on the back first it's the ugliest don't have loads of time so we're going to do the front half and the back half but for you guys it's one episode oh yeah let's uh let's buzz some of this off let's see what it looks like underneath so andy's been in there for about 40 minutes and he is stripped back to bare metal, we used the flap disc and then we used a wire wheel on a drill and that gets, the wire wheel that is, that gets some of the extra rust that's in the pitting. So we need to get as much out as possible. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't gonna last forever, but it will last a lot longer than just lashing it up. We've got enough of the surface clean and he has gone further enough back, further enough? far enough back to expose all the rust. That is the rust and that blows out bigger. We do need to do a little bit more underneath. Let me crouch down. So we need to get some more of this brown off, make it look a bit prettier. It hasn't gone into the seal lip. So I cut carefully with a blade and exposed all the rust and the lip is okay. Because look, let's be honest, we don't want to dig all the way into it and do something we don't need to. So there is a few more holes than you might have been expecting. And this one was in there. But this whole piece of metal 
it was wafer thin. It had gone on the inside. So I've cut a rectangle out and it's solid either side, solid around there. Um, yeah, and a little bit more on the bottom. We've cut a bit of a bigger hole, you might see, and a little bit here. This bit had blown through. Although we don't need it to be showroom quality, we want it to last a while. So I've cut a little square out there. It's a little bit off square. I'll straighten that line. I'm going to do it in a few pieces. It would be nice to have a repair panel because then you would just cut one big rectangle, nice and simple. But we haven't. That costs money. I've got a load of metal kicking about. Um, Andy can weld. So I'm going to make the little plates, tack them in place. Andy can go around them. But before we go any further, you can see the rust was underneath one of the layers. So before we do any welding, we need to get some anti-rust stuff all the way inside, under all the layers, just so that way, when we put metal over the top, it's not going to rust straight back through. Let's get the uh, the Q-rust out, show you how we're going to apply it. Then when that dries off, I'll scotch it off. And then we're going to put some etch primer over it, a bit of zinc primer, and just try our best to keep it at bay. Let's get the Q-rust out. So we've got the Q-rust out, literally. That's exactly what it says on the plastic pot, not tin. Hammerite Q-rust converts rust, transforms rust to a stable surface in 15 minutes. I use it all the time. Again, it's not gonna last forever, but we're just trying to hold it at bay. I've got it in a little pot lid from a, an aerosol can. A little brush, and I'm gonna apply it over the whole surface, everywhere goes quite a long way. We're just getting it absolutely everywhere. And the reason to do it when it's cut open, rather than do it first of all, because when it's cut open, I can literally get inside the sill and do the inside of the panel. So we're not just protecting the outside or anti-rust in the outside, we're doing the inside as well. Literally, just brush it on, and in half decent temperature, sun's out, even if it's 20 degrees, it should go completely black in, what did it say on the pot, 15, 20 minutes? Um, depending on how much you put on is depending on how long it takes to go off. And literally, just apply it over every bit of rust, work it in there a bit. We're just covering all the rust. And that's why I went over it with a drill and the wire wheel, because we're trying to lift as much as the rust out so this gets right to the bottom of it. Rather than not grind the rust out and this just penetrate the top layer, grind it back as far as possible. And that way, the anti-rust stuff actually gets to the bottom of the rust. Um, gonna apply it everywhere. Literally, the metal actually goes off pretty sturdy after, pretty stout. Don't matter if it drips all over the floor. I'm going to get all the way around the edges, around the insides, on the inside, literally, absolutely everywhere, soak it in it. I might give it two coats, I'm going to let that go right off and we'll see what it looks like. As you can see, the Q-Rust has all gone nice and black, it's done its job. It took 20 minutes, half hour. I've done all inside, done the backs of the metal, done as much as possible, and it's solid metal. That's as anti-rusted as it can get, really. I have already spent, I spent maybe 10 minutes making this. I've cut a plate out to fit in there. You, I'm sure you can get what's going on. And it has got a little bend on it. I have got a metal folder. I know some of you guys at home haven't, so I just used a vise put it in the vise, measured where the bend is, tapped it over with a hammer, done it a couple of times back and forth, and we've got it close enough. Now, the one thing I will say, and I always say it in my welding videos, you don't want metal touching around the edges. Believe it or not, you need the panel, new panel, to float in the middle, because if it's touching on the edges, and then you weld it in, that creates the bulge from overheating and stress so you need to have a little gap. With little panels like this, it is hard. I need to take a little bit more off this corner. But um, that is one made. I'm gonna make a big one from the bottom, 
and I always weld what you can see flush. That way you can grind it off, you haven't got to load it up with filler. But under here, it's quite hard to weld it flush under there, so I am going to overlap under the bottom. It'll make it a bit stronger and uh, it'd be easier to weld. But anything on the outside, we're going to weld flush. A piece here, a big piece under the bottom, and then two little pieces. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time tacking these in place, making some little plates, and then Andy come in, can come in and uh, spot them in nicely. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Let's get some more of these plates made and uh, let's see how it looks. So I thought I'd get this one buttoned up and then we'll do the other ones after. This one and this one is the main one on display. I've got my plate in and hopefully you can see there is a small gap all the way around the plate rather than touching. Now don't get me wrong, it can touch here and there, but ideally you don't want the new panel touching the old one. And this is spot welding. It's literally, as it says on the tin, it's not pretty, it's not gonna look like the welds on a push bike with spot welding, because if you just welded a slug around that, it's gonna distort out of shape badly. So I weld a few tacks in, and then I go around and I join the tacks up. Let it cool down a bit, couple of tacks, let it join up, and literally, just a little, I don't want to put too much heat in it. So I'm literally, if you just do it one crackle, pop, then the weld sits on top. If you hold it for too long, it burns in too much and you'll end up making more holes. So I let it go on the second crackle. It's hard to, it's hard to explain its experience. You get the idea hopefully. I'm going to finish this one up, cut the other plates and tack them in and Andy can do some pigeon shit all over them and then we can grind them off. We've got to grind them off anyway but uh, this one's on display, it's perfectly flat, I don't want to load it up with filler, I want it flat and it's going under stone chip. It doesn't need to be too perfect because it's going under stone chip but we want it to be as close as possible. Anyway, I'll finish this, cut some plates and uh, we we'll finish this up, then when we get the plates in, we can prime it and uh, we're getting closer and then we move on to the front and that's this whole side done. We're at day two of the welding. Uh, we got cut short the other day and he had to shoot off. It's been a couple of days and you can see the surface rust hasn't started coming back at all. Like uh, the anti-rust solution, the zinc primer, all looks sweet. The bit of metal did smooth out all right. It's not perfect but you know the deal guys squint she's mint um i will put a little tiny bit of filler over it i did get anti-rust all inside up in it i was painting in the back of it with uh anti-rust solution squirted a load of zinc primer in there we're happy days i'm now going to do the big piece and then there's going to be two little pieces i'm going to show you what's going on got the grinder out we have got the pen the ruler and the angle doobery and metal has been marked. It is 28.5 centimetres wide, seven centimetres deep. You can do this sort of work with uh, cardboard and templates and stuff, but I just measure it, cut it, bend it into shape, trim it up, and uh, yeah, just spend a bit of time making the metal fit nice before you even grind it in, uh, weld it in, sorry. That way it normally goes to plan. If I was doing a piece of metal a bit more bespoke, I might make a cardboard template. Uh, it saves cutting, cutting up metal, then making the mistake and cutting it again. But we're gonna cut this out. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time making it fit right because it has got a little bend on the end. We're gonna roll a time-lapse. So I'm gonna roll a time-lapse on getting this side all welded in. Then we're ready for a bit more primer, then a little tiny bit of filler, then stone chip, and then possibly a bit of white paint. Let's see how we get on. Roll the time-lapse.
So we uh, bare metaled all the rusty spots and then I've feathered it out ever so slightly with the 120, just so you haven't got a cliff edge, uh, a transition between paint and no paint, feather it out a bit further. Then I went a little bit further with 500 just to prep the areas a bit further. I did start taking the line of the stone chip off because we're gonna stone chip a bit further and I didn't want there to be two lines. So I've feathered out that. I've ever so slightly feathered out the edge here where we, uh, we stopped grinding. I am gonna put a small skim of filler just to make it mint, might as well. Uh, so first we're going straight in with a bit of U-Pole etch primer. Comes in a red tin. In fact, let me show you. You can paint brush this stuff on. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be sprayed on, but I've got a spray gun. Now, this is a bit of a small build series on what you can do for not a lot of money. And I know what some of you might be thinking, well, I haven't got a spray gun, I haven't got a grinder, I haven't got a welder. Well, I have. So I'm using them, trying to do it as basic as possible, as budget as possible, but I do have the benefit of having air tools, spray guns. Anyway, etch primer. I haven't thinned it down at all because thinners is very corrosive. So uh, a bit of unmixed etch primer on there and etch primer has zinc in it. It adheres nicely to the metal and the zinc has anti-rosting properties. I haven't gone mad with taping up. I'm going to have the gun low, a coat on it, a bit of a dusty coat, let that flash off, and then a little bit more, making sure to blow it in round all the edges because rust normally comes from edges or stone chips. Anyway, enough chit chat. Get some of that etch primer on. that is about it. With regards to the welding, just something I want to stumble across. I could have spent a lot more time getting it flatter, but it's under stone chip. It is a budget build, but I am a bit busy with other stuff. So trying to keep time saving to a minimum or maximum, however you look at it. So that's fine. It looks a bit like a blanket that your nan used to make, you know, patchwork blanket, but with a skim filler, you'll never know. Um, ground the welds down as much as possible. You don't need to grind them all the way down. If you're gonna skim it, you might as well leave some on there because if you grind too far to smooth it right out and look like an Instagram post, bare metal restoration, it'll then end up wafer thin and it'll end up cracking. So I've left as much on as possible. That is enough etch primer. Yeah. And that just anti-rusts it as good as possible. The primer sticks to the metal better than paint. Gonna let that flash off. Then I'm gonna do a skimmer filler. The reason why I didn't do filler first is because filler to bare metal, rust can come through right at the bottom. Etch primer on first, then a skimmer filler. Rub your filler down. If you've got any exposed bits of metal, a little bit of etch primer again. Then when we're done with the filler, I am gonna two pack prime, which is high build primer over this whole area, let that flash off for 24 hours, DA the living snot out of it, and then, uh, then we'll do the stone chip, and then I'll paint some white. All the other way around, not decided yet. Uh, yeah, still haven't decided. Let's, uh, let's let this flash off, cut the skims of filler, let's see how it looks. Happy so far, happy hand? Happy days. Oh yeah. One thing I wanna show, it is imperative. I know it's a strong word for this channel, but it is literally imperative that if you've done some welding, there's bare metal on the inside here. If I look down there, I can see the inside of what we've welded and you need to coat it or it's gonna come back through fast. So I've got my etch primer, again, anti-rusting properties, and he's got all the insulation off and look how much is in there, boy. Loads of it, Geyser's done a nice job. Um, 
I've got my fan set to pencil mode so it comes out like a pencil. There's nothing pretty about it, just get it on there. Yeah, that's literally dripping. What I'm gonna do now is lower the back end of the van so all of that drains to the back because I just can't get to the back. Then when that's flashed off, I've got what you call cavity wax. It's in a spray can. It's got like a two foot nozzle and I'm gonna get that in there and just spray it all with cavity wax. You're never gonna stop it unless you chop that right out. But if we can make it last a good few years, We'd be happy. Let's uh, let's lower the back down. Then we're gonna get some filler on and uh, <sighs> bit smelly in there, but uh, of smoke paint that is, not of uh, bum cheeks and fag butts or anything. Let's uh, let's finish this. Are uh, you? Yeah. What we thought was just a little bit of surface bubbling has actually turned into a mammoth repair. And I tell you what, the old covering that uh, VWs use, that's been like a body bag holding all the moisture in there. I've cut the rubber seam sealer back or the rubber shirts, whatever it's called. And I've even cut it back. You can see I've cut it past the rust and there was water all inside there. So I've cut it back till there's no more water. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna cut a fresh line, well, as fresh as I can get, as far away from the shutter as I can get. I need to expose it, we need to clean it up. This is what it looks like before. Literally, I haven't done any, pulled it off, and it just keeps breaking. So we need to find where the edge is. And that is about an hour later. Looks a lot better. Just getting rid of all the jaggedy edges, cleaning it up. And the good thing about these, on most vehicles, this outer sill actually runs into this lip, but not on the caddies. They stop about here. That is the edge of it. Managed to grind through the spot welds. And uh, yeah, it's just a case of re-spot welding it under here. So rather than having to weld all the way along, we can spot weld it here, weld around the outside. Let me just show you the plate I've already made. It looks lovely. So that is our fresh piece of metal. And if I hold him up, fits like a glove. 84 centimeters long, so she is a big bad boy. And uh, it is just a flat bit of metal. Zero budget builds, so we didn't want to go and get a new piece of seal. I had a bit of metal, I've made it, and how I made it, is by first of all cutting it to fit then i drew a line where the crease is and then because the front of the seal is slightly rounded i come up with a strategic top idea rounded it a little bit on the front edge then to get the crease i screwed it between two bits of wood carefully tapping it over i wanted a nice sharp line so i spent a bit of time on the line and uh, that is the result one brand new seal. Andy's gonna clean under here a little bit more. We've got most of it off, I just wanna get a little bit more off. And everywhere we went further back, there was water. Well, we've gone back behind all the water. It's all nice and clean. Just need to Q-rust it all in here. Then we're gonna put a bit of zinc primer in there. I am gonna paint the back of this with a little bit of zinc primer. I will also weld, no, I will also spray some uh, weld through primer so we haven't got bare metal and bare metal. Then we're going to spot weld all the way along the outside. And that is a whole brand new seal made in less than an hour and a half, i.e. start to finish or start to this point. Let's get the, uh, let's get the camera out and roll a time lapse and let's get this done. The back's almost done. So we're going to do this whole seal and that lower quarter in one go. It's got a bit more involved, but is what it is, we're nearly there. That was actually a lot easier than it looks. Straight piece, weld around the outside, spot weld on the inside. Well, I have got to make a little return for the end as well, but uh, yeah, we'll get there.
we are finished on the rear seal for now. We uh, done a little bit of filler work, then I put some zinc primer, acid etch primer, sorry, then a bit of two pack primer. The swage line has ever so slightly dropped off, but I believe there's enough uh, primer on there to block that straight. I won't be able to leave that, that will bother me. So hopefully there's enough primer on it. That is looking sweet. If we come round here, I have just finished the last bit of the seal. We welded the seal in, we're happy with it. It's got some zinc primer on it. And then I went round to my local shop and they didn't have any zinc primer. But we have got metal nitromorse rust control, anti-rust graphene primer. Looks pretty good and uh, the specs on it are pretty good. Hopefully it works, hopefully it keeps rust at bay. I did put a bit of etch on just to be sure. I've just made this little return on the end because the seal was open there obviously. Um, cut a little piece of metal out, nice and simple. Welded a thick bead round the edge, then ground it down, happy. We do need to get a screw hole in here for the wheel arch liner. And when that primer goes off, it is sopping wet. And I have primed all behind there. I'm gonna put a bit of seam sealer in the little gaps. We don't want any water getting in there. While I've got the wheel arch liner out, I might as well have a look at this little arch. We're gonna do a small local. And local, in bodywork terms, is doing a small area and losing the edge. It might not look a million dollars, but there is a swage line there, an arch line that I might be able to lose it out on. Whatever, it's gonna look better than that. If we look on the inside, it's not gonna last forever, unfortunately. Let me spin the torch round. We can see it has completely gone. It's completely rusted away. I am gonna sand it down, anti-rust the back of it, anti-rust the front of it, and splash a bit of white on but it's not gonna last forever. But as long as it makes it look tidy for the near future, and Andy will get a wing at a later date, but I might as well grind this off. Loads of primer, loads of etch primer, anti-rust, yada yada. Let's, uh, let's get that done, see what it looks like. So it did grind off nicely around the outside, but unfortunately, the whole edge is gone. It's like all jaggedy. Um, Oh. I'm going to have a look on uh, Marketplace, eBay, see what we can find some wings for, because the other wing's even worse. This was the good wing. It's not so good. I'm going to put something over that so it don't stand out in your eye. But uh, I'm going to have a look about. There's no point wasting any more time on that. It's knackered. And you know why? It's because there's no paint on the inside. These manufacturers, when they get rusty wheel arches, if they just put a little bit of paint on the inside of the wheel arch, this wouldn't happen because the rust comes through from the inside out and climbs up. Got to work some stuff out and see what's going on. But while I'm working that out, I do need to put, because you can see my step. I couldn't get it perfect, not in the time. It's perfect in a few areas, but not everywhere. I'm gonna put a little tiny skim of filler on that and then we're ready for stone chip and paint both of these tomorrow. So primer has gone off. Today's paint day. And if you remember in the last shot, I wasn't happy with the swage line. I know it's a zero budget doobery, but I want it to be right. I've just drawn a line with a ruler where the swage line needs to be. Oh, I'm gonna try and unpeel some tape with gloves on. The line dropped down. So I need to block this face to bring the line up. And to do it nice, bit of tape along the line now I've got 240, going straight in for 240, I want maximum cut. And I'm just gonna block up to my tape. That will straighten my swage line. I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes blocking this along and that'll bring the dipped swage line 
back to straight. Hopefully, it better straighten out or I will have to filler it again. But I'm pretty sure I'll get it. I've already got most of it back already. Let's, uh, let's get this blocked out, see how it looks. I'm gonna block the whole lot and then we'll have a look. So we're nearly there on blocking down the primer. I did put a bit of satin black on. A bit of satin black, matte black, any black, but not gloss black. And it just helps you see what's rubbed down. I've done this by hand. It's nearly perfect. I do need a little bit more tickle in there. But what I want to show you with the matte black or satin black, you can see the line. The line's straight here. There's a little dip in it here. So I'm going to put one more bit of tape, block it a little bit more. Then I'm going to put the tape on the bottom edge and block the top. And that line will be nice and straight. I'm not going to show you any more with the primer. I just wanted to show those little cheeky tips. I did put a bit of filler along the seal, a really light bit, and then I've had to step it up to the old stone chip. Um, is what it is. Ideally, you want to take it off, but there's nothing wrong with it, so it can stay. Going to get these knocked out, get it all taped up. We're going to get stone chip along the bottom and then some white on this quarter. Um, looking sweet. We are finally ready to get some stone chip on and then some paint. I've crudely taped up. I haven't got mental, but we've got some tape on it. We don't want overspray everywhere. We're gonna get some stone chip on it. I did put some anti-rust over. I broke through in a few places where I put filler on. So any bare metal, I did put some, uh, whatever that posh primer was yesterday, anti-rusting primer. It's all gone off. It's all prepped, scotched out. I did put some tape inside the door shut because it's going to blow in there you would have had a lot of splatters in there so i have taped up in the door shut going to get some stone chip on let it flash off for half hour and then pull that back tape off or back paper and then i'm going to put a little bit of white over the stone chip and over the quarter um, when doing stone chip you need to move fast because it comes out at quite a rate i have wet the floor Two reasons, main one, keep the dust down. Second one, the paint doesn't lay on the floor as much when it's wet. So you won't have big white patches like that one from yesterday because I didn't put any water down. So, water's down. We've got a bit of tape hanging off around here. Let me sort you out. Oh, I've got a leaky airline. I will replace it one day. And that is about it. Stone chip on there. It is a solvent based. So I'm gonna let the solvent flash out of it. Then I'm gonna peel the back paper off. I'm gonna put some white over that and the quarter. Let's let this flash off. There's enough on there. It looks consistent. Um, you'd never know there was a massive gaping hole in that seal yesterday. Anyway, let's let this flash off. Let's get some paint on it. Oh, yeah. Just peeling the tape off. And there's something very satisfying about peeling the tape off. And you can see it is relatively thick, the stone chip. Or as the Americans call it, rock chips. Yeah, fresh. Let's get some white and let's go over it all. I did also put a little bit of primer there because we broke through the, onto the filler. Filler is very, very bleh, filler's very absorbent and it can suck a little bit in the paint and you'd see it. So a little dust in a primer, finished it. So guys, paint code of this is 902. And my buddy down at Bumper to Bumper, he does spray out cards. And you can see, these are all 902. These are all the same color code, but look how wildly different they are. And the three we picked, oh, they're on the front. Apart from he's got overspray on his bloody spray out cards. Um, that one's pretty close. That one's slightly dark. So out of that one, 
and that one. Thanks for uh, letting me interrupt you. As per usual. Thanks, mate. So that is what goes on with mixing paint. It's not just white. That's an easy one. Yeah, I've seen a, a few. God, just run back to mine. Pause. Is that it? I was going to say. It looks white. It's all white. So that is all the colours. There's blacks in there, golds in there, blues in there. Just to make a yellower 902. A Volkswagen grey white, I believe. Let's lay some down and see how it looks. So it's paint time. I've got 100 millilitres of paint. Now, in keeping with the zero budget restorations or the DIY what you can do at home, obviously it would be good if I was using a, a spray can right about now. But to be honest, a spray can of mixed paint is about 15 quid. It's not the end of the world, don't get me wrong, but this 100 mil of paint cost me a fiver. And I put it on the bill, it's in the wood. So I haven't even paid for it and I can get a better finish with a gun. That is just a light wipe over with a tack rag. I have already degreased it, etc. I'm gonna put a coat on here, then over the seal, let that flash off, and then one more heavy coat to get the shine. And remember, I'm doing a blend out here. Before I do it, and it looks absolutely pony, it's the best I can do. So we'll see. Hopefully it comes out all right. The colour's pretty close, or as close as it can get. Um, yeah, let's get on with it. Gear's splurting out of my gun. Bit of uh, I did clean it, but obviously not enough. So I'm going to go over the seal first, because you're not going to notice a crap finish over textured paint. So let's clean the gun out over the seal. Oh yeah, need that to flash off. It's gonna take 15, 20 minutes out here to flash off. Let that flash off and we're gonna do another heavy coat. And then whatever's left, I'll dump underneath. I won't film anymore, I'm just gonna get it done. But, happy with that, that line is straight as an arrow. Yeah, happy days. It is 24 hours later and the rain has come. It's nearly rainy season. Anyway, paint has dried. I've given the whole panel a bit of a wipe. Andy was splashing through loads of puddles, giving it a clean. And uh, we're gonna tickle out the blend edge. And what a blend edge, or a fade out, sorry. What a fade out is, if you're trying to go from old paint to new paint and blend it in, you don't wanna paint up to your tape because you're gonna have a cliff edge. For donk, for donk, you sort of stop with the paint. Don't go right to the edge, you sort of come away and let the pressure off so the paint thins out on the end. Um, it is a skosh whiter. I can't do anything about that, but if we do the wings, I'll probably add a bit of color into the white and that will blend in the paint a bit better for the next paint we do. Um, I'm gonna tickle this off. I've got 2000 grit, loads of water, and I am just carefully tickling through it. I'm going to take it back maybe by 10 mil and then we're going to polish it and we'll see how it looks. And that is it, we are done. You can see the blend out, you can see it, but it's only because we're looking right at it. If you're yay away, yes you can still see it. The colour is a skosh white. When we do some paint work on the, the wings and stuff, I'll add a little bit more darker, a bit more yellow to the paint, and that should blend it in even better. And I may even do a little puff over that. I don't know. We're happy with how it looks. Um, yeah, really happy. Swage line, really happy with that again. Um, come out very nice. I do still need to polish the door a bit more. It will get the color a bit better. But look, 
if we remember what it looked like before, it definitely looks a lot better. Um, yeah, really happy with that. Couple more bits we're gonna do. The front wings, <sighs> we know they're a bit ropey. If we don't find some used wings or some cheap new wings in time for the, the next caddy meet, I will put a bit of white on it for him to tidy it up. It's coming along very well. Yeah, really happy with that. Happy and? I love it, mate. You've done an amazing job. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. This took a bit of time, so no T5 video today. This has taken its place this week, but uh, we'll have a T5 video next week. And now this is the hardest bit done. I still need to put the inner wheel arch liner back in, I can see. Now this is the hardest bit done. This is the bit that took up all my time. So uh, Andy can get on with some other bits for next week. I will point him in the right direction. Um, yeah, it's come out very well. I do need to give a few bits more polish. I did go over the, uh, the quarter with the polisher this morning. We got a bit of overspray. Unless you go mad with taping, doing a proper job, you'd be surprised how far overspray goes. Um, but polished up nicely. Couple of little edges to clean up around the outside, but it's looking a lot better than when we first started. Um, yeah, happy days. One thing I want to quickly point out, a few of you asked in the comments, um, she's a 1.9 TDI, PD 105, something like that. We'll put a remap on it very soon, but for now it's good. It's done 200,000 miles, still runs mint, no smokes, knocks, rattles, bangs, or anything like that. And we noticed it, but I forgot to mention in the start of the video, but a couple of you have spotted it. We've got big love for number plate. Ah, uh, yeah, um, and if we stand back, apart from the ropey looking wing, it's a lot better. Um, it is looking sweet. With that wing on, she's gone from a 20 footer down to a 10 footer. We're getting closer. Anyway, I'm straight on with the T5. Let's have a quick update on that and let's wrap this one up. That is it for Andy's caddy in this episode. He is super happy with how it's turned out. It did take me a little bit of effort to get this done, but the other jobs are smaller, so Andy can do a bit more. Saves me a bit more time and I can get on with the T5. I might end up splashing another little bit of colour over that rear quarter. It stands out more to the door rather than the quarter where the fade out is. If the colour was a bit closer, the fade out would be nicer. I'll either put another splash of colour over the quarter, even though Andy's happy, he said I don't need to. I want to, I want it to look even better. So I'll either put a darker colour over the lower quarter, or I'll put the same colour over the bottom of the door. Because he has got a few marks on the bottom of his door, maybe we'll do that. Either or, I want to make it a look bit. Uh, I want to make it a little bit better. Andy was happy, but I want it to look as good as I can do it for small, easy, zero budget restorations. All I've spent, yes, I've used a lot of stuff from the workshop. All I've spent so far was 18 quid on Q Rust and some of that graphene primer, and then a fiver's worth of paint. So just over 20 quid is all I've spent. You can do stuff like that at home with a rattle can, grinders and stuff like that. If you haven't got a welder, hopefully there's someone that can help you. It's all quite basic stuff. Really happy with how it's turned out. One thing I do want to mention, I'm not someone who likes to ask for stuff, so I'm a bit cringy asking it. If anyone's got any caddy bits kicking about, whether that be old used wings, as long as they're not rotten, I don't mind repairing a few dents. Any caddy bits kicking about, some used coilovers or some used lowering springs, drop me a comment, send me an email. I don't want them for free. If you can donate them, happy days, because Andy has got zero budget. So I want to do as good as we can on a very small budget. Anyway, I'm on with the T5 build. No video on that this week because I've done some. I've actually skimmed the whole roof. I'll give you a quick sneak peek at what I've been up to this week. But because I've been doing the caddy, Andy's one, I haven't had time to film a full video. I'm on it now. We're going to have a video for next week. And I have also had some other bits done to the caddy. So I'll let someone else do some work. It's only window tinting. Don't worry, it weren't anything too full on. It's the first time anyone else has ever touched my van apart from me. So I was a bit nervous. But check out this shot. Looks sweet. That'll be in next Wednesday's video. <sighs> If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the thumbs up. 
Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.